What's up everybody? I'm back. As you can see, the cube is here in the garage and uh, it's pretty much the bane of my existence, but needs to get done. It, the motor knocks really bad and I've never done this before. I have no idea how to, as far as like, I have no previous experience. I've never read a manual on it. I, d I don't know the proper procedure about how to do this. I know how I'm going to do it. And I want to show you guys just kind of step by step um, well, not fully step by step, but a general perspective, I guess, of what it's like to tackle something for the first time when you're a mechanic and you're going, okay, this engine needs to come out. I've never done it. I don't know anyone who's done it. I'm not taking it to a shop. I'm not going to spend forever reading about how it's done in a manual. I'm just going to figure it out. So it's really simple. I got my phone sitting up here just in case I need to look anything up because there is always something you're going to have to look up. It's just inevitable right in this day and age it's just good to have that there but you, you kind of take a general look at it and as you can see i've taken off a few of the intake pieces so i've got them sitting up here and then i've got the battery right down there um, i took the grill off which was pretty simple it's just these tabs on the bottom right there push them in and yeah, see right there's slit slit there and there so you know, pop that out from there i can see the this core support as you can see by the different colors this one's here is actually painted the body color this one here is a weird off gray and these are black right so these are going to be the support obviously this comes out i've done enough front wheel drive vehicles to know that a lot of times when you have an engine that has things sticking out over top of it it's probably going to either come this way or it's going to drop down i'm going to take it out this way that seems to be the easiest and most practical way to get this done due, due to the fact that the transaxle has to come off the car is going to get jacked up the front wheels are going to come off and that'll let us get the axles out uh, because I don't want to worry about having to put the engine in right here. I'd rather just do the transaxle and everything all at one time. And it's it's just a lot easier that way. So front bumper is going to have to come off. First thing we need to do is get these headlights off. Really, that's the general way that we go about doing this kind of stuff is you just take a few minutes, you poke around, look at the vehicle, and you try to decide what things need to come out of your way. How do they get disconnected make a mental log of it if it's anything that looks like it's important that you're going to screw it up you're not going to be able to just look at it and go okay this is how this goes back together uh, take some tape you know we've got our, our blue painter tape stuff here this works really good for this i don't like using white because it gets really really dirty really quick sometimes you can't see it a little bit of grease on it and it's ruined something about that blue painters tape works really really well so we just do that right on it with a black sharpie and that'll help you remember anything you may need to color code or what it goes to. And, you know, you can make them fairly long. You can, uh, you know, like use the notes on the, I have my iPad sat over there or we have phone or you can get a pen and paper and you could even write like a little code and make a key. So you remember, you know, this is what all this is, write that on the paper. And then you can go back and refer to it. You could step by step, write down what you did. You could get, um, sandwich bags put your bolts in there and then label it you put the tape around it write what it is so that it doesn't come off you don't want to write it on the bag not a great idea there are lots of ways that you can easily solve these kinds of issues so for me it's time to get this thing going so let's get at this right here all right, so getting off the front bumper does seem to be fairly easy you have a 10 millimeter on each side or a phillips head screwdriver let me turn that on for you uh, that's going to be right there and it's on both sides and then you just have these little clips right here and you just you just pull it literally uh be a little gentle i did break one right here um, i'm not sure if i broke that or if it was broke before but then if you look down in here you'll see there's also some bolts uh, you just go on the underside take out those 10 mils and this whole thing should just pretty much come right out so next we're taking out the headlight as you can see, this one's already out. You're gonna take out this body clip here. The other one had one right here, I believe, and right here. So yeah, you got one there and one there. Uh, it'll remove this little plastic piece. See, this one here is actually the one for the other side. So you can see this one only had the one, has one here and one here. Um, and then you have, there was a 10 mil right here a 10 mil right here, a 10 mil right here. So again, 
that was for this one was one right here one right here and then this one right here let me take off those body clips and then it comes out so next i started loosening the radiator core support areas bolts you can see i have these little brackets kind of flipped out here and there's two bolts right here they go here and here i left this one tightened as well as this one same thing here in order to take off the hood latch okay and that's gonna be oops it's gonna be these three bolts there here here and then here uh, go ahead and take those out and then removing the cable is very simple if you pull the spring this way see if i can do it one-handed turn on the light for you the minute you see how that this thing right here okay see that actuates by that spring you can either take it off or you can just relieve the tension and then this thing comes off from the inside of there it really really simple as this pulls this way you can just slip your finger in there push that cable down and out and then take it off from right here and then the cable you know you can just put it wherever you need to to get it out of your way you can unlatch it from here if needed and, and just kind of hold it out but that makes it to where this isn't dependent on either side that it needs to be on we can go ahead and get this removed now all right, so as the core support comes off, there's something I want to mention here, and this is very important. Put your bolts back. Always put your bolts back. As far as the AC, you do have to unplug this, and the whole reason why I did it this way was so that, as you can see, I could just lay the bracket over here, and we're not worried about wires. So the method to the madness, when you're taking something apart that runs along here and that shares wires with multiple stuff, is pick the one that's going to have the least amount of damage if a clip were to break and you can't replace it. In this case, it was just the hood latch cable. And so now the AC is dangling here, the radiator core support's gone. This Once I clear this stuff out, which next the bumper is coming off, four bolts over here, two bolts down here, Two bolts over there, nothing over there. Now this is ready to come off, or it should anyway. I guess I need to take the bottom bolts off the bracket to get it to come off. Loosen it so the bracket can hang a bit. There's no need to take it off completely. That should allow the bumper to slide off now. What's going on here? Oh, okay, there we go. And as you can see now, we just need to, can we safely swing this? Yeah, see, maybe if we find a way to support it off to the side over here, we might be able to get away with that just because of how thin this is. And hopefully it won't mess nothing up. All right, well, I was able to make the AC bend out of the way, which is really, really nice. That actually was something I was extremely worried about because usually most vehicles you can do something... Whoops. So most vehicles, you can do something like this where you can swing the compressor out of the way. Well, I mean... Not, the compressor's right here. Okay, you can swing that out of the way because those lines aren't hard. Uh, they're almost always soft like that. I, I don't think I've ever seen AC lines that mount hard to the actual compressor. And one of them is always this one here, right? Which is what allows that to swing that way. And sometimes they put a soft line here, but most of the time it is a hard line. Uh, still, as you can see with this one here, it was pliable enough, or malleable rather, to where I can move it over there without any real issue. It is kind of sitting right here, so you know, we need to be careful about that. I'm not too stoked about that there. Um, so you know, we could, uh, yeah, can't really remedy that too terribly much. Uh, maybe prop something up on this side here, which again, these are your easily solvable things. Uh, this is just kind of what you do is you're, you're making do. I don't want to drain the AC system, so this is my solution for it. And then the compressor will just hang down over here as the condenser sits off to the side. We got the little bolt that's you know, holding it in place. And as long as we don't bang on that very much, which realistically, I, I have never beat anything up like that. This would be the only thing that would be hitting it, and the legs should be low enough that it, it really doesn't mess with anything. I can also make the arm real long. So yeah, one step closer. Now uh, we need to start getting into the guts of things. And so this here, the radiator is going to be next. Get the water drained out of it. Get the oil drained out of it. Uh, oil is probably going to be pretty bad. So the likelihood is we'll get the car jacked up and things of that nature. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back when all that's going on. I'll let you know what the next step is. 
All right, so next step is getting this thing off. And as you can see, I have it pointed toward the front of the radiator. The reason why is because right here, there we go, some light on the subject. Right here on the underneath side, as you can see, hopefully, yeah, you should be able to see. Right there, you can see there's a Phillips head. That's the petcock. So what I'm gonna do is take this thing and you, as you can see, I have it right there. And I'm just going to find the hole and I'm just going to start loosening it. So this part sucks. You're going to get your hands messy. Yep. There it is. So set that somewhere safe. Make sure you're grabbing it. I guess I just set it. We'll sit right there. Don't you go nowhere. Pull the top there, let it start draining out, and then get the radiator out. Moving the radiator itself is really simple. Just connect the top hose, which I have tucked back right here. This is the only clip that you're going to have to take off. Mine came off real simple, didn't damage anything, so it'll go right back in its place. That is for the fan. Just tuck that away over there. Remove the lower hose once you've drained it off. As you can see, I got my bucket there. Got fairly full, didn't make too much of a mess. Get your cat litter handy. Got some right there. Clean up any messes you have left. And then, uh, yeah. As you can see, almost the entire engine, well, I, mean, I guess it really is fully exposed because, you know, it's right there and there's an axle that's over there. So we take that wheel off, take the axle out. That side's good. Do the same thing. So with that in mind, that's that's how you do it. I mean. This is the basics of, you know, I mean, if you, if you don't know what else to do from here, uh, I, I would not be tackling this if I were you. But this is the basic of what a mechanic goes through in order to understand and do something new. Uh, we just start kind of taking stuff apart. You logically look at it and go, what's where? How is this put together? open up your cavity whether it be you know a lot of vehicles you drop a subframe as you see this vehicle doesn't have a subframe that you would drop like that and so the easiest way to get the engine out is to just pull it this way so you know the rest i'm going to take this stuff off here disconnect the intake as i said uh, get those axles out pull the engine easy peasy lemon squeezy all right, well, that's going to conclude my little mini tutorial here about how to figure out taking out an engine when you've never done it before. The general process a mechanic goes through. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, let me know. Put down in the comments if there was something I could do to improve, maybe help you guys out. Let me know. If you're here for cube stuff and you need help, just drop it down in the comments. I'll instruct you any further from here on out. It's, it's basic engine stuff. Uh, as I said before, it's, it's nothing real crazy. We're just going to get the transaxle off, get the engine out. I mean, it, it's not in that order. Uh, I do have a spare engine already. And maybe I'll give you guys an update when it's put together. Really, this is just something I'm trying to breeze through real quick, get it done, but I also wanted to record something for you guys that I thought may be useful. So hopefully it was. If not, eh, whatever. Uh, I'm sure someone may find this useful because there's not like a whole lot of cube videos out there. And uh, man, I really just want to get this thing sent. You know what would be cool is if we stuck an SR20 in there. That would be cool. Or maybe a K-Swap. <laughs> I wonder if you could fit a K-Swap in there. I imagine you can. You can with, and you know, as long as you got a welder and a grinder, you can make anything work. All right, this is Monkey Mike. Peace.